welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Wendy, and today we're going to be talking about leaps, endometrial biopsies, and saline ultrasound. <laughs> Like those are three gynae procedures that you don't hear a lot about but I mean if you're somebody who might need that or hears of somebody who needs that it might not be a bad idea to like talk about it so let's get into it all right I let my hair down for this so a leap there are people who need um, a portion of their cervix removed when they have abnormalities of the cervix. So after we've done a, a pap, we've done a colposcopy, if we've determined that those uh, pap results are showing that the tissues or the cells are leaning more toward the precancerous side, like closer to cancer, like high grade or even moderate grade dysplasia, you may need a leap, which means you need part of the cervix removed in order to stop it from progressing on and developing cervical cancer. It's a very effective way to do that, to, to stop this uh, process. And it is um, done in the office and it's done under local anesthesia. So I'll show you that the advice um, shortly. Endometrial biopsies and saline ultrasounds are done to assess what's going on inside of the uterus. So a little bit different location, um, but still assessing tissue and um, seeing what's actually inside of the uterus. The thing about the uterus is it's a closed space that does not have um, really anything in it, but if there's like a polyp or a fibroid in it, you may see signs of that on ultrasound, but you may not. And so in order to, to see what's in there, you, and, and okay, I take that back. You will see signs of that, but you may not see exactly what it is because you can see like there's something in there, but you can't really see very clearly. So if we pl uh, inflate the, the uterine cavity with saline, with, which is basically salt water, you can actually see if there's like a little something in there, like a polyp or a fibroid. And also if people, certain types of people are having abnormal bleeding, so people who are like over 40 or over 45, or depending on the characteristic of the bleeding, you may actually want to take a sample of the tissue that's on the inside of the uterus in order to, um, see is that tissue precancerous or cancerous and that will tell you if you need to do like a hysterectomy or DNC or like what else may need to happen or take progesterone but to management for certain types of cellular change that's going on inside of the uterus. Um, a big take home point here is if you're somebody who's not on hormonal birth control and you're skipping periods and not having periods for for months or God forbid years, that is a risk factor for um, uterine cancer. Also a person who is having really spotty or re regular bleeding, especially over the age of 45, also a sign or a potential symptom of precancerous or cancerous um, activity inside of the uterus. So these are people who would likely need a saline ultrasound. Um, even if a person who um, is younger and is having irregular bleeding, that they may have like a polyp or a fibroid. And again, a saline ultrasound is going to help to show that. Um, some people who are having fertility issues, a saline ultrasound is going to also show what's going on inside of the uterus. If there's any structure that's blocking the uterine cavity, like a polyp or a fibroid, or they, there's saline ultrasounds that we can do to um, determine if the tubes are open because again, a person who's ha having difficulty achieving pregnancy, it could be a blockage in the uh, fallopian tubes that's causing that. And so sometimes you'll find that out with the saline ultrasound, you'll see if the tubes are open, these are my tubes, um, <laughs> around the uterus. And then also you can um, sometimes even flush the tubes out because there, there can be like a buildup of, of whatever is in there that can stop the tubes from, from flushing uh, easily and for sperm making it through and eggs making it through and so sometimes you'll do a saline ultrasound for somebody who's having fertility issues and the next thing you know they're pregnant because you just paved the way you opened up the the, the tissues and so um that's another reason to to do that that kind of evaluation so i'll show you the stuff let's let's go do that so this is our our uh drawer for the leaks and in it, you'll see that there are a number of loops. I'll see if I can show you a loop. Oh, this is a loop um, to remove a portion of the cervix. This is a more square loop. We basically decide which loop we use by what the cervix like, what the level of dysplasia or cellular um, change we see. Yeah, these are loops also um, when we do when we look at the cervix, because you can actually often see the area that's affected. Um, this is a deeper loop. Um, and ever, all of them are small. I hope you can see, like, relative to the size of my hand. It's not like they're big devices. 
And this is just an illustration of what it looks like. So you basically bring the loop in, that's the cervix, you engage, I don't know why there's sparks in this video, I borrowed this video, but you engage the device, it has an electrical current and it basically cuts part of the cervix. Um, but the current also makes it so that it doesn't bleed too much and you take that part out. And this is a pipel for endometrial biopsy. Again, I want you to just see relative to the size of my hand. It's a super, super thin catheter that goes into the uterus and pulls out, pulls out the um, tissue that we need to send for, t for pathology. So you see, take out some of the tissue and then remove the catheter. And then this is an example of a saline ultrasound where saline has been used to inflate the cavity. You see a polyp there, you see a fibroid there, just interesting. I hope this was at least a little helpful to just give you some insight into, as to what to expect, what your body will be going through, what we'll be doing, what we'll be looking for. Um, never be afraid to ask questions. Uh, never go into a procedure. I'm just getting my hair, my little flyaways. Never be afraid to, um, you know, want to pause and just understand what's happening. This is your body. So you should understand what's happening. You should feel comfortable with what's about to happen. Um, you know, I, I, I just hope to empower you to be prepared for what's going to happen, but also to be ready to get the answers you need. Let me know what else you want me to talk about in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.